would you say if I told you I read 12 books in two hours? Would you laugh at me? <laughs> would you think that you're crazy? <laughs> well, what if I told you it was picture books? Well, that's kind of realistic, right? As an author, um, an author does a lot of reading. Um, in fact, I've probably read more than 150 to 200 books over the last couple years. Um, because reading these books, they're my textbooks, really. Um, I'm reading them for research more often than not. Um, I enjoy most of them, but but I, I don't read just for pleasure as much anymore. Although I, I should add that in and make sure I make time for that. Um, but as an author, I, I read these different textbooks for different things. Like if I'm researching a publisher that I'm interested in submitting some of my work to, um, I will research the different books that that publisher has printed. And then I look through the library system usually to see how many of those books I can find and request. And I'll read through them and get a feel for if I like what that publisher um, publishes the type of books and if my writing would fit in with what they do and something they might be interested in. Um, other to, like right now, the books that the 12 books that I read in two hours, I was looking for ideas on how to ground the characters in a book. I'm working on the second edition of The Very Hungry Duck, which is my first picture book. And I wanted to see how these different illustrators grounded their characters, how they um, demarked what the floor or the ground was like and then the rest of the rest of the picture and um, one of the books that that was my favorite that I've looked at most is I Want My Hat Back by James Clausen and I'm sorry Mr. Clausen if I'm mangling your name feel free if if you ever say my name to, to get it wrong at first because Seward is rather challenging to get right um, but Mr. Clausen, he, um, like, if you know, Best Illustrated Children's Book Awards right there. Um, but his pictures, his illustrations are simple, and they're, they're not bright, they're not flashy, but um, it, they're just simply brilliant, really. And so I took a look at how Mr. Clausen demarks the ground and where his characters are at. And it's just, just a simple little spattering of stones and dirt and, and, um, and flowers and just not ornate, but it grounds the character and it works. Um, I was also looking at um, Mr. Tiger Goes Wild by Peter Brown and how um, Mr. Brown anchors his characters on the page. Um, and these were two of the helpful ones. And also, Mo Willems in Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus and the other pigeon books. Um, Mo doesn't show the ground at all, usually. In fact, there's um, the only... And he doesn't do um, shadows, either, unless the characters are off the ground, and then there's a shadow. Um, but the other thing that Mo Willems does that helps to ground the character is the pictures, the, all the backgrounds... They're not white. There's a color on on the pages, and so that in itself helps to ground the character. Um, but so what I did in this was looked at how these different illustrators um, did this on the page, and I thought, okay, what works for me and for my illustration style and, and for my book? And so then I played around with the art program on my iPad that I use for doing my digital illustrations, and I came up with some different options, and then... Um, put those on to, to the page for the backgrounds that I was working on and came up with something that, that I liked. But I am going to go back to the books to look at some other things to figure out some other questions that I have as I'm finalizing my illustrations because my deadline is getting close. So anyway, thanks for stopping by and I will see you next week.